Listen to me. I did. Quit it. I did nothing wrong. Put I your hands behind your back. I said quit. In a shocking twist of entitlement and ignorance, an individual found herself in handcuffs for attempting credit card fraud. Now, everybody out. Whoa, whoa. Step out now. Let's go. Step out. Keep Step out. Walking. Step out. And he gave me the code for it, and we came in. And he said we were good to go, and those notes were these papers. Okay. This incident unfolds like a cautionary tale, revealing how privilege can blind individuals to the harsh realities of their actions. Have you ever wondered how a seemingly small choice can lead to serious consequences? Get over there! This is a There's a man that came here and said I Turn around! Sir, and put you gotta do an investigation! But I am! On August 27th, 2023, a woman's reckless attempt to use a stolen credit card at Family Dollar unveiled a tangled web of theft and accountability. It all started when police were summoned to the store, responding to an alert about a suspicious transaction. As the drama unfolded, the cardholder received a notification and swiftly identified the suspect, setting the stage for a gripping encounter with law enforcement. What happens next reveals the complex dynamics of crime and consequences. Stay tuned to uncover the full story. All right. Anyway, I got a note. I was at home. Got a notification on my Chime account. Somebody tried to use my Chime card here at Family Dollar. My wallet was stolen from this gas station over here. I called up here. The lady that works inside knows the girl that came in here and used my card. And then I recovered two of my cards in that dumpster right there. Okay. Just a day before the incident, the victim's wallet was stolen from their vehicle at a nearby gas station, taking not just cash, but also personal identification. When the suspect attempted to use the stolen card at Family Dollar, the store clerk recognized her from security footage, revealing a chilling familiarity with the area. This connection raised questions about how well the thief knew her surroundings and what might happen next in this unfolding drama. Did you report your wallet stolen? Already? Yes. Do you remember the deputy's name that you reported it to? Not that I know because I live, when I go to my house, I'm in Pike County. Yeah. So I just called them and they said they, they just, they didn't really come out and do a report. They just took a note over the phone or something. Like I said, I was laying at the house. I got a notification on my card. I keep my cards locked. Mm -hmm. And got a notification at 12.05. I can, I can go get my phone and show you. Okay. Right here. Or I had, it's a detail, $6.91 a family dollar. I called up as soon as it came through. I called down here because I come down here at least two or three times. She knows me, and I came and I called her, and she said, "Come down here. We got we can have her on camera using your card." She tried to buy a pack of cigarettes with it, and, they, and she said that she come out and showed us, and she said that she lives right there in them. It's facing the doors are facing this way. Uh huh. They live over there, and she said her name was. And she's with us. And the girl inside said, "If you need to ask her anything, she'd be more than willing to." to verify or which card did they try to use uh, i'm assuming they tried to use this one the chime card that's this locked one? yep yeah i try to keep it locked and this also my other card these two d could these when i went looking around i figured after they tried to use them they figured they tried to dump them somewhere but my whole wallet's missing my id's missing my social security card a couple other cards that i have i had like 40 dollars in cash i know the 40 dollars in cash is gone i'm not even you know when did your wallet get taken yesterday yesterday yes and you said it got taken from the Sunoco? Yeah, right up here. The, at the, um, Did you lay your wallet down or something? No, or? no. It, it went apparently open when I went in the store with my brother and my sister-in-law. Uh-huh. So it was taken from your car? Yes. About what yeah, time, well, first what time I, would I, that have at, been? At first, I thought I'd misplaced it, like I couldn't find it. I looked, and then I realized that it, it didn't get used, and it, 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 the cards didn't get used until today, or tried to get used until today. Mm -hmm. You know, I called and reported my stuff missing, you know what I mean? That's why mm -hmm. there wasn't a stolen report. I called and reported it missing because, you know, my card and stuff, in case anything went through. I'm at the house and that and that notification goes off where the girl tried to use my card and family dollar. Apparently she says this girl is dope fiend around this area, lived around here. Yeah. Oh, she already knows how I'm I know who she is. Yeah, she's apparently the, the girl that tried to use my card lived over there at, like I said, in Yeah, she lives right there in that that door that's looking at us yeah all right let me go in here and see the clerk okay no problem after gathering information from the victim the police proceeded with their investigation entering the store to speak with the staff these employees were crucial in helping the officers identify the suspect hello what's up what's uh last name i have no clue engineer i would try to figure that out i don't know so she never because that's who she's in here with. Uh -huh. 
And then if she ain't over there, then she's probably over there. That's yeah. the first time I've seen her in a while. So I'm sure you probably know as well as I do where she all hangs out at. Oh yeah. She's probably back here. Who knows? But that, what? like I said, that's the first time I've seen her in a while. But that's who what she was, was she wearing. Scuzzy clothes. She had like a red, something red around her. Like, wasn't even a scarf. Looked like just a shirt pulled over her, over top of a. She was tweaking big time. Okay. What color is her hair? Reddish. She had sunglasses on. But you know it was her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. All right. So, like I say, he found him back here in the dumpster. More than likely, she started him in there on the way back. Um, you got family. video of him in here using it? Have it be, get it. Because I told him to stop back in tomorrow, because I wrote down the time and everything so she could go back and... Okay, that works. For sure. And you we'll want me to have yeah. her let you know, you know, so you can see it, or... I'll need a copy of it. Okay. I just, she just needs to make me a copy of it. That's all I need. Okay. So I can put it with the report. All right. Thanks. Fifty four Ross, I'll be out here on the street and see if I can make contact with my suspect. Using the initial information gathered, along with support from witnesses and security footage from the store, the police pinpointed the suspect's residence. They were set to execute a surprise that would catch her completely off guard, unaware that her actions had been exposed. Stay tuned to see how she navigates this unexpected confrontation. What's your name? Mine? Sitting next to you. Why? Because I asked. I you can huh? You can yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here investigating a crime. Okay. They pointed me to these apartments. Okay. So what's your name? Yes, sir. Stand up. You're under arrest. For what? Well, for one thing, for receiving stolen property. Because it's a credit card. I don't leave. What? I've got you on video. Okay, Stand up. Card, sir. Listen you, to me. No, wait. I used the card, but it was of my own standing. A gentleman told me I could use his card. Is that why the gentleman had... The, the gentleman just pointed me and said I could use his card, but he said okay. that I brought he's, it he's, to he, he's telling me no. You got, Stand no, up. you got to listen to me. There's a gentleman. Now, I don't know. I didn't ask Put you. your hands. No, you got to understand. Put your hands behind okay, your back. Sir, no, I'm you not, did. That's not we're fair. We're not playing. You. you got, no, stay here. Me. Get over there. This is a, there's a man that came here and said Turn I could Turn around. Sir, you got to do an investigation. I am. Put your hands behind your back. Sir, there's a man that said I could. Put your hands behind your back. I am the one that knows. Listen to me. I didn't, quit it. I didn't do nothing wrong. Put your hands behind your back. I said quit. Sir, I didn't do nothing wrong. Quit. Said I Turn it around. And was... Tell me anything okay. you want. As soon as I put handcuffs on you. Okay, do. Turn around. I just told you you're under arrest. What do you think that no. means? Well, this guy just come here, didn't he? There's a gentleman came here and said I could use his card. A gentleman just came here and told me it was his card. Turn around. Give me your other hand. Bullshit, dude. Give me this? your other oh. hand. I told him, I said, you're listening to me. He told me I could use this. Baby, look at the f***ing card. I thought it was her card. I don't know. I was his dude. It's not fair. So you gotta understand. Someone said I could use it. I never asked Listen for his me. ID. Listen to me. Keep your lips. Is that yours? Or can I get that pill out? Huh? It just has hair dye in it. <laughs> After thorough police investigations, the suspect was taken into custody. She asserted that she had permission to use the stolen card, a claim that opens a complex legal discussion about intent and knowledge in theft cases. This situation underscores a vital truth. A lack of understanding of the law does not absolve someone from the consequences of breaking it. This is an empty wallet. You just throw it out. Yeah, that's the wallet. That might be his. No, it's not his. Well, we'll find out. Marsha. Listen to me. I don't know where she's from. Listen, listen to me. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court. You have the right to counsel with an attorney. You have the right to counsel with an attorney. And I have an attorney present. If you cannot afford an attorney, one can be provided to you before questioning. Listen to me. At no cost. Do you understand these white rights? Why? Because a gentleman handed me the card that I 
All right. I never looked at the card. How many people that stay with I you? I own them down the road. That one stay with you? Yes, all of them. Yeah. Come on, you're going to go out here and sit in my car right now. What are you talking about? I'll be back in a minute. Yes, I'm talking about all the videos down there. Why do I need to, to, listen, to, to listen to you? You just fought me in there. Because you weren't listening to me. And you're not, you're turning over your mind to the I just said to my little girl, I was trying to be funny like she was. Let me go next door, no. You was Before she said, like, punch Turn it. around. I was just joking like she was, sir. Can't you look at it? Just ends it here. Hold still. Now, if you want to keep yourself out of trouble, mm -hmm. I expect you to tell me the truth. I'm because listening. She ordered, well, she asked me because she's getting custody of me to go get pop for her. But she didn't tell me that that was someone else's card. So she would, she pulled it out and was like, Was it in that wallet she flipped out? Yes. She didn't want to get Two there. Of, and then she threw them over there in the trash can. Where? Yep. Oh, the guy found them over in the it trash was, can. It was a time card. She was like, they're not useful. So she just threw them away over in that one big dumpster that has a whole thing of water in it. At the store she threw them Yes. Okay. All right. I'm trying to get out. I'm being ordered. I just didn't want to say it because I knew that she was getting mad at me. So I'm going to tell you. I, yeah, yeah the, the wallet was stolen. I thought it was hers. I didn't know. But then. I, I don't know. I told her, I said, you got to watch who you're around because things are being watched. And I said, you get in trouble, then I'm not going to be able to get you. There's a gentleman that said that was his car that gave it to me. What's that gentleman's name? Who? His last name is first name. It's awful funny. The name on the card doesn't say. I'm sorry that he said he used to try to use it all, whatever, at the other store. And then he came over here and said that I just, I just tried to purchase a pack of cigarettes. If I tried to steal anything, I would have tried to buy more than that. One striking aspect about fraud suspects is how often they claim that someone kind gave them something. It's a recurring theme, and I sometimes wonder if they're actually being duped by a larger scam operation. It's a sad reality, but the truth often disappoints us due to the greed of some individuals. Thankfully, the law has caught up with them. As she sits in the patrol car, Every word she utters sounds like a feeble excuse, because the police are fully aware of what she has done. What are we doing here for? Can we just... Oh, because I gotta I stop right here and... I it, but I thought it was somebody else. Alright. Yeah, what a stupid. Huh. Is this your wallet? Yes, sir, it sure is. Alright, I'm gonna hold on to this as evidence. Your two oh. cards you got? Yeah, you want them? Yep, I need them too. I'm going to give you a uh, paper here to fill out. Okay. It's just a witness statement form. Okay. Uh, I'll need you to fill that out for me. Uh, that way you can take your time with it because I'm going to have enough. I'm going to have one. I've heard she fought you a little bit. Oh, yeah, she fought me over there. So, yeah, she fought me in the house over there. Yeah, yeah, we heard you out there hollering. So. Okay. Nope. Well, I just got you in trouble, man. Yep. Here you go, man. All right, I'll fill that out um, for you. Top line, don't worry about it. I'll okay. fill all that. This line, don't have to worry about your school. Okay. Print your name here. I'll put my name here when I get it back. Mm -hmm. And everything, because if you call Pike County, they're they're not doing a report. I'm gonna do a report on your. Right, Pike County stolen. don't do nothing. You know what I mean? Uh, that it got stolen, right? Yeah. About what time? I'd say about four o'clock. About four o'clock. Tell me about your wallet getting stolen mm -hmm. and then about what happened today. Okay. Okay. All right. Facing charges for receiving stolen property, theft, and resisting arrest, the woman's situation highlights the consequences of poor decisions. The video evidence played a crucial role in securing her arrest, reminding us that actions have consequences, both immediate and far reaching. Will this incident serve as a lesson for her, or is it just another chapter in a cycle of behavior? Share your thoughts in the comments. Moving on to the next event, it's clear that walking into the bank with a forged check was a decision she would soon regret. It's not mine. What's mine? <laughs> What's in my purse? Fair enough. On February 1st, 2023, officers rushed to a local bank after receiving a report of a forged check. As they approached the scene, the tension began to mount. Little did they know, what awaited them inside would uncover more than just a fraudulent transaction.
You got to try the only. Um, it's right there. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Yeah, where'd your friend go? Um, I'm assuming to the car. Is it, I'm sorry, is there a problem? Yeah, where'd she go? What's the, what's the issue? Well, she just left without you. Where'd she go? She went back to, I'm actually supposed to be leaving now because I had to go pick up. Okay, where'd she go to? I just said to the car, sir, what is okay. going on again? She got, in, she got in a car in the middle of the road. Okay. So okay. they left me? Yeah. She, so so I'm maybe a negative on a single word, they did not touch. Just hang on. After confirming that the suspect was being detained, officers proceeded to meet with security personnel and the branch manager, who were actively handling the situation involving the forged check. Bank staff informed the officers about an ongoing scheme involving a group that had been using fraudulent checks across multiple branches. Their modus operandi involved depositing small amounts of cash and then attempting to cash the forged checks before vanishing, a clear violation of both state and federal fraud laws. Hi, how you doing? Hey, yo. Oh, um, so, Jim Milford, I told him to call me. He's our corporate security. Okay. Um, so the other day we've had a very strong, it's kind of like what happens is they get these fraudulent checks. They put enough money in the account to try to cash the check against it. So we had one the other day that came in. Yes. 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 Was it the same, same a group? Different, a different group. I imagine it's like the same. But at, at your branch. Was it? At your branch. Yeah, there was another girl here yesterday and um, she went to Golfgate. So now okay. she's here. We got information from another. Um, and what's been happening is they have a bunch of different checks. So I don't know about this one specifically, but it's usually like the same thing. So um, uh, my corporate security wanted to know when you were here. So let me take one. She's got the information for another branch. They just said be on the lookout because what they do is they hit all the branches. Yeah. So and then we we're trying to stall her. And that's when he came in, that kid. And he's like, oh, well, what's taking so long? And I was just trying to stall her. Okay. Um, so explain to me one more time, you were saying they were putting money so, into the account. So what they do is they have an account with us, right? And they they must steal the checks or whatever because they get uh, they have different ones and they go around. So what they do is they come around and they cash these checks because it looks like they have enough to cover the check. So they mm -hmm. cash the check, they pull out the money, and they hit all the branches in the area, all of our branches. Um, <clears throat> and they have different checks. Now this isn't a region's check, so I don't... I don't know, but hang on, he's, um, so he, he, he called the other branch, so he knows. Hang on one second. So this is what we got. I mean, we had the same thing the other day, but different. Okay, just an FYI, so it's trying to catch a check for 743, started in a couple branches. 12, 1259, when did that? Yeah, it's one, Lisa, she's a branch manager from Cortez okay. Road. But so it's they same, have same name. Yeah, so what they do is this. They get a bunch of different checks, and they go around trying to catch them against their available balance, and then <clears throat> it's just like a, it's like, it's a common thing. They try it all the time with us. Um, the Sharon Jones, is she? she um, no, it's not with us. And then she said she took a picture of her driver's license and the check, so. And see, it's a different check, see? Well, see how it's a different check? See, it's a different check for 743. She's got a different check. They have, she, they probably have a ton of them in that car, whoever that person was with. Yeah. And we had oh, one the other day oh, who the police went to golf gate, a different girl with the same situation. Okay. She had different checks. Okay. So um, our corporate security is trying to get a hold of Lisa. She and I'm sorry, who is Lisa? Um, Lisa's the one the from the Cortez, Cortez branch? Cortez, okay. The one that submitted that. Okay. Yeah, so um, our corporate security is like, just give me a minute, he's trying to get okay. information. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what's going on here. At this point, the woman was still fully committed to her role, feigning confusion as she innocently asked the officers what was going on. Her performance was convincing, but it wasn't enough to change the course of events. Perhaps she was banking on the hope that the police wouldn't dig up anything useful. Yet, little did she know, the investigation had already gathered enough leads to see right through the charade. What's that? Yeah. It's fine. What what I plan on doing is just kind of questioning her. It's a common thing they do. Yeah. But the person that came in that was with her that came in, he said, just, um, he said, hey, how much longer is this going to take? And of course, I was trying to stall her, right? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I was at lunch and they said they were calling you. So that person got on the phone with somebody and said, I'll be there in about 20 minutes. So I don't know what they were. Yeah, so I just, I just saw her walk out and get into a car that was out there on 41. Dude, so they said. Let's say that for me.
After the fraudulent nature of the check was confirmed, the suspect was promptly detained. Officers informed her of her Miranda rights, a crucial step mandated by law to ensure that she understood her right to remain silent and to have legal counsel present during questioning. This safeguard is designed to protect individuals from self-incrimination, ensuring that any statements made are voluntary and informed. As the reality of her situation set in, the gravity of the legal proceedings began to loom over her. I'm going to read you your Miranda warning, okay? Okay. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to talk to an attorney and have him or her present with you before and during any questioning. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer my questions or make any statements. Having these rights in mind, you wish to talk to us. I'm sorry to say it one more time. Having these rights in mind, you wish to talk to us. No. I would like to have, like, a... Okay, you're an adult. I know. Okay. I have a sister law that works at a correctional facility. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be going to jail today, okay? Re regarding what's what's going on here, if you'd like to talk, you but I'm still going to go to jail. Yes, you're right. You're going to go to jail, you're going to be booked, and... Like with grown ass women. Yes, you're an adult. Okay, what if they beat me up or something? Were your uh, were your friends gonna come back and get you, or were they going? I to don't help? know what's happening. Do you want to explain to her what she's being charged with? Uh, you're being charged with uttering a forged instrument. Instrument. This check right here was not bought to you and was not written to you, correct? And now I'm gonna okay. be. I'm going to be charged the because they put a gun in my purse. They put a what? During the search, officers discovered a Ruger 9mm handgun with a scratched off serial number in her purse, and notably, the suspect did not possess a concealed carry permit. Faced with this alarming revelation, she broke down in tears, insisting that she had no knowledge of the weapon's presence. She vehemently asserted that she wasn't a bad kid a statement that seemed paradoxical given the circumstances unfolding around her. This contradiction only intensified the gravity of her situation, as possession of an unregistered firearm could lead to severe legal consequences. Yep, they did. <laughs> Do you want to tell us about this? <laughs> I think I was set up. You were set up? I don't know. Oh my just... god. Can we please call somebody yep. for me? Uh, okay, so you wanted a lawyer. You didn't want to speak. We're not asking you any questions, okay? What questions are you going to ask me? We, I can't ask them. No, I don't want this to happen like this. Well, this is happening at this point. So at this point, so I'll, I'll tell you. Please don't talk to me like this. I'm not a bad kid. Okay. You're a young woman now. You're not a kid at all. Yes, sir. I understand. We, we spoke to. We spoke to. Please do. I I'm, I apologize. This just es this just escalated. So, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, yes, sir. that young woman. Yes, sir. Never heard of you. Certainly didn't write you a check. Okay. So you're being charged with that. I understand. Okay. Do you have a concealed weapons permit? I do not. Okay. So now you're being charged with carrying a concealed firearm. No. By any chance, are you a convicted felon? No. Okay. Well, then you won't be charged with that. How long have I been with that? This is crazy. I've never been to jail. I just got out of foster care. I was just out of work as a correctional officer. <laughs> Could you... Is there any chance that you can put my hair up? Uh, Ma'am, I don't do hair. Just, we'll brush away when we get to jail. Okay. <laughs> Is there anybody going to be able to talk to anybody? 
It was loaded with one in the clip. Isn't that like extra years every bullet? I don't believe so. As the officers explained the additional charges related to the altered serial number on the firearm, the suspect became increasingly distraught, feeling the situation was profoundly unfair. She insisted she had no connection to this chaotic scenario, despite the fact that possessing a loaded gun with a modified serial number while committing a felony carries serious legal repercussions. In Florida, each firearm is assigned a unique serial number for identification, and criminals often scratch off these numbers to evade detection, particularly when the weapon is involved in a crime. If a gun is stolen, perpetrators may also remove the serial number to further conceal its origins. Given the state's laws, gun charges come with mandatory minimum sentences, and her circumstances were dire. If she didn't cooperate and implicate her accomplices, she could easily face five years in prison, even without a prior criminal record. This stark reality loomed over her as she grappled with the weight of her choices. Oh, uh-oh. This just gets worse and worse. Possession of a firearm with an altered serial number. I'm gonna have to look it up, but I think that's a charge too. This is not fair to me. Possession of a firearm with an altered serial number is it? Yeah, it is. What about possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony? That's what I said. Oh That's my. What it's all like. So um, you're trying to add to our design? You're going to have like five felony charges. Why are you trying to make it work? Oh, you got uttering. This is not my fault. I don't know. I'll wait. Please. I think possession of a firearm is a felony with a firearm. I don't know. She didn't. I mean, we'll you know, look it yeah. up. I think oh, well, that's what. Merely possessing it while committed, because she's not using it. It wasn't used. <sighs> so there's no. Well, what are we waiting on now? He's calling the CID. I mean, we can probably go ahead and load that. Yeah. Um. So being yes. that I've never been in a situation before, I know I'm doing it, so I take responsibility <laughs> for it. <laughs> Even like this is not fair because I have nothing to do with that. And yeah, I'll take responsibility. Hey, uh, there's no way I can get out of it because it was in my purse. Listen, at, at some point, someone's going to question you, okay? Fine. I can talk. I... Initially, she had refused to continue speaking with the police after they informed her of her Miranda rights. However, confronted with the gravity of the situation and the potential consequences, she now expressed a desire to discuss her possession of the weapon. Like, what do you want me to tell you? You didn't want to talk. I want to talk. I didn't know like this was going to happen. Listen. <laughs> I'm only 18. The law takes us very seriously. When we read you Miranda, you say you don't want to speak until you have a lawyer. Like somebody, I'm very vulnerable. Like I've never, like I just don't know what to do. Okay. That you do not want a lawyer. And I you do want to speak to us. But like what does speaking to you mean? Explaining. Of course I do. I will speak to you and say my side because I deserve that. Your exact words when I held this purse was, it's not mine. It's. I said, what's not yours? You said, what's in that purse? That indicates to me you knew what was in that purse. I'm not going to ask you questions, but if you want to tell me a story, go ahead. No, it's, I'm saying it is in my purse. Okay. I knew it was in my purse. I wasn't using it. I was no, just, you weren't, and I'm not accusing you of using it. I know, but like, they had just put it in my purse for a second. <laughs> they? <laughs> What's, what's our status? Are we talking? We're ready to roll. Are we talking now? Or? Have an attorney. Okay. She wants to tell us her side of it. I mean, I still want an attorney, but I'll talk, obviously. I, like, I you have no obligation to do so. Of course. You suggest, like, you think I should have a lawyer? I, we don't give legal advice. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Again, you're, you are an adult. I think you know what, what's going on here. I understand my If you'd like to talk to us. When will I get a lawyer? Until I go to court, right? You, you will go to... <laughs> no. Uh... I'll talk. Okay. All right. In a revealing moment, the suspect admits to knowing the firearm was in her purse and acknowledges her involvement in cashing a bad check. Her expressions of regret and claims of being set up evoke sympathy, but also highlight the consequences of her choices. I'm going to start off with some, some basic easy questions, okay? You are, you're 18 years old. Is this your correct address here in Brooksville? No, not anymore. <laughs> Just, it is what, it is what, Nicole, Tommy. Is that who was here with you today? No. 
I became like homeless when I got out of foster care and they took me in and I just recently moved it. So who 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 came in here today when I was when I was coming in and they were walking out? Who was that? That was my friend. They call her they call her Dope Boy. I don't know her full name. Is she from uh is she from up north in Wildwood also? Give us more than Dope Boy. You have part of a name. Give us part of a name. No, don't worry. Brittany. You got a first name? No. Okay. How long have you known her for? Probably two months. Live next to each other? No, I, Wildwood is is not where I'm from. Other than her, who else was with with in the car today? Okay. Was um, who's Jasmine Richardson? Is, was that on the chip? It's not a stupid question. It's a real question. I I, I understand that. Was she in the car with you today? No. Actually, the only female. Who was? Dope Boy? Yes. So, who was the guy in the car that was driving him? I don't know. It was her cousin, I think. Do you know Jasmine Richardson? No. Would you like to tell me, like, who you think it is? Alright, let's talk about this today. This check. Where'd you get this check from? Um, her cousin. Her cousin? And you got, you were the one that volunteered to come in and pass the check. And you knew that this was a stolen check? <coughs> how, how did, do you know how they got the check? No, um, they said that it was like a legit, <laughs> legit job. A legit check, but it wasn't <laughs> obvious. Obviously. You didn't know that, right? I didn't know it was like this. I didn't know it was fraud. Do you know Sharon Jones? No. Did you do any work for Sharon Jones? No. How is it that she came to pay you $605? <laughs> her claims of being set up do little to alter her current predicament. However, this investigation is poised to expand as authorities look into additional suspects connected to the incident. So you knew this was a bad check? No, I didn't know it was this bad. No, it was this... Like this? Okay. So, you said you told us that they set you up. No, I said I, I think I was set up. Is that your gun? No, that is absolutely not my gun. Did you put the gun in the purse though? No, I did not put the gun in the purse. But you knew the gun was in the purse. I did know the gun was in the purse. So you knowingly walked into a bank with a gun in your purse. What was your intentions with the gun? Oh, I didn't have any intentions because it's not my gun. Like, I don't do stuff like this. <laughs> I would never do anything like that. <laughs> but, I mean, you seem intelligent enough to know that... But I knew, I out. knew I should have took it out, too. <laughs> but they told me not to let... I'm sorry, to not let the other person in the car? <laughs> to not let the other person in the car see the gun. So Dope Boy, is Dope Boy the one who put the gun in the purse? There was one person. So there were there four people four. in the car. No, that's so the driver, you're talking about the driver? No, I'm saying there's the driver and Dope Boy and there's another person. So there's okay. Two, two males, two females? Including yourself. Um, so I know you guys aren't local. Where did you guys come from today? I think we're Atlanta. Can I ask you, did you come down here for this express purpose? I, I guess I can say so. I mean, that's why I mean, none of the four of you live down here, correct? I, but listen, I kind of just like get in the car. It's like, okay. I did, it's like I'm trying to say they have intentions of like, oh, this is why I'm coming all the way over here. You were also up on in Manatee County, and you cashed a check earlier today at one o'clock. Where's all that money at? Is it back in the car? No, they have. Yeah, they have it. Okay. Um, are we all good here? I will handle it. Well, uh, this there's no cash. There's no wallet. But you had your ID in here, right? Yes. Okay. So this, I think, can go with her. There's no medication. They, who has your phone? The others? Okay. Okay. And the only... There's no nobody's phone here. Is there a way you when you go to jail that they could... I could keep doing names and you can find a number in the system? If you want me to reach out to somebody... 
maybe you should think a little harder about the three people who were in the car. So I can't make a phone call? Oh, no, call. at the jail, you can make all the phone calls you want. I'm asking if, like, if I give them a name and they can look up a phone number. And I don't think, I don't know, maybe you can ask them. So, like, if I can't come up with anybody's number, I'm just going to be sitting in jail. Well, then you'll go to first appearance tomorrow. Tomorrow. And you'll probably be given a bond. Oh, bro, what if people do? Listen, <laughs> corrections officers are professionals. They're there to protect. My sister works at a correctional officer. And she says, <laughs> do, you, do you know her phone number? No. Who is this young lady? Oh, it's my what? sister. That's your sister. That's my blood sister. Also, she's not in the car. This, There's a deputy's business card in there. Is this Pinellas County? DeMarco? Hey, DeMarco? I'm not sure. It's got, a, it's got a case number on it. Uh, it could be because it's from Foster. Did you get in here too? Yeah. We're going to use oh, one, you guys, one case number. You guys, that's yeah, my I sister. The thing is, this, you guys can call five, her. Five, three, four. You what? have my sister's work ID, so you guys can call her, right? You well, we're not. Yeah, once you when you get oh, to the jail, you can call her. You ready? Yeah. She faced multiple serious charges, uttering forged checks, carrying a concealed weapon without a permit, and possessing an altered firearm. These offenses not only highlight the legal repercussions of her actions, but also serve as a stark reminder of the importance of understanding the law. Engaging in criminal activities, especially involving firearms and financial fraud, can lead to severe consequences that extend far beyond the immediate situation. This case underscores the critical need for individuals to be aware of their legal rights and responsibilities, as ignorance of the law is not a valid defense. When did you start moving in? I started moving in about two days ago. So at least was signed yesterday. How'd you move in two days ago? Don't you think that's suspicious? On April 12, 2024, in the quiet suburbs of Florida, a seemingly routine call turned into anything but ordinary. Officers were dispatched to a vacant rental property following reports of a possible burglary in progress. The owner claims unauthorized occupants are living there. This highlights the importance of property rights and the role of law enforcement in protecting them. But as new details came to light, the situation escalated quickly, prompting the use of an emergency. So what's going on? That's our property. This home is supposed to be vacant and have them trespassed, arrested, whatever we need to do. What I'm gonna have you do is I'm move your truck down over to where that blue vehicle is so you're out of the way, sure. all right? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, right, victims uh, willing to press charges. You just wave me. Yep, you need I gotcha. Right, give me two at the front door and then another one in the rear. I'm going 97. Sir. There's already one back there, so. Yeah, we already got a guy back there. No, no. Go back there and each hold the corner. Santana, come into over here. The police were fully prepared to surround the house, where the intruders were believed to be hiding. With each step closer, the tension grew. The mission was clear. Get the suspects out safely and begin the investigation. All right, you ready? Want to come up? Police! So now, everybody out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Step out now! Let's go! Step out! Keep step out, walking. step out. Can you, can, can you? Can't cuff her. Can we not talk? Hey, no, 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 I no, live here. No. Anybody else in there? Come on, come on, come on. Step out. Hands in the air. Walk this way. Step out. Step out. Come on. Everything will be explained later. Later, please. Be a style. It's still be known. Don't move, okay? What is going on? Who's got an extra set of cuffs? Don't move. Put this hand on top of your head. Ready? Bye. Can we talk? We go talk now. Can just can give me a minute. Talk? Can we, we go talk? talk now, please? Can you give me a minute? All right, we'll my talk. bad, my All right. bad. All right. I'm just saying, my girl, guys, like, come on. What's going on, bro? All right, take him. Yep. yep. What are you inside this house? We freaking paid for it Monday, 4,800. All right, you just have a seat right here. I have a whole lease inside. The lease is right there on the dang thing. We paid 4,800 Monday. A guy came today. He opened, he freaked the code. Hey. 
Just tunnel you. Okay, okay. This'll... Hello, he's saying there's a lease inside the house. When confronted by the police, the occupants claim they have a valid lease, even stating they paid a hefty $4,800. But, as officers investigate further, the situation begins to unravel. The lease was supposedly signed just the day before, and the access codes don't match up with the timeline. These inconsistencies immediately raise red flags about potential fraud. The law is clear. Any attempt to knowingly enter into or use a fake agreement constitutes criminal activity. I got it. Oh, was that a lease? Come on, boy. They signed it yesterday. I have a lease, I paid money, and like I, I did everything I was supposed to do correctly. We're gonna figure it out, okay. all right? Yeah. We got the lease there, we're gonna try to, so I'll just come, we're gonna clear, all right? So just work with me, work with us, and you'll be fine. Uh, be one of those lease things. So I got scammed. It would be listed as IH. Okay, so it looks like somebody set up a, fa a fake uh, lease, fell victim to it. Yep. Seems like one of those fake lease fraud things. We see that a lot in Echo. And the owner will show up like, yo, what the hell? Like, yo, like we got a lease here from this person. Like, that's that was my realtor. Like, what? It's electronic. We signed it as well. So. Yeah. No. That's none of us. It even says innovation home yeah. on it. That yeah. lady got a code at four o'clock in the morning. Four in the morning. At four in the morning, and they try several times to open the door. We literally haven't even been here for like five hours. We literally leased and everything. We signed a lease and did everything. I ain't do, I don't know. I ain't do nothing wrong. I know I didn't do nothing wrong. Who's, uh, has Ruiz's guy taking this or is he just? No, he said no. He's not taking it. Okay. Who's primary? Okay. Fake lease. Mm -hmm. um, they're leaving regardless of what happens and what their enrollment is. This shit was signed yesterday. Yeah. And they just had people in here on the 9th. So this is a super quick turnaround. You have the right to remain silent, you understand. So we get a call. Somebody was breaking inside his house. That, and to that point, that's what we know. So that's why we, there's a lot of us here, because that's what we get. Hey, I don't know Hey, I don't know you, you don't know me, so I don't know nothing about it. Who are these gentlemen that you're here with? My boyfriend and the other is my boyfriend's brother. Boyfriend and boyfriend's brother, okay. Next, we will hear the girlfriend's statement. Pay attention to her attitude and the information she provides to the police. Will her words shed light on the case, or will they only raise more questions? Let's watch closely to uncover what's really hidden beneath the surface. Have you been access to that? You had a code. You had someone text you the code. Yeah, the somebody text you the code. Yes, yeah, so it was text me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just sent him through the text me number, and he gave me the code for it, and we came in. You're the one that signed these? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say if we had evidence that shows that you accessed their system to gain a code at least four times? Yes, we did do that because we kept on getting locked out from the code. So we asked them, they said, go through the invitation homes to get the code. Start with a B. It was like an Indian accent guy. We never met him. Okay. Do you have proof that you sent this guy money? Yes, we cash. And where did you give this person cash at? Uh, we found him on Facebook, I'm pretty sure. And he gave us the email. Stranger cash that you've never met and that you couldn't get access to a home that's done by a company. Where happened to the original door handle and all that stuff? Where'd that go? I had left to go get my stuff and then the door handle was gone. So your name's on the paperwork, not anybody else is here. Yes, I do understand that. Mm -hmm. But I had left to go get the rest of my stuff. And I noticed the doorknob was like different and I didn't think anything of it. You didn't bother to talk to anybody? Came and did it because they don't want people to access it after right. we moved in. I had gotten it from my parents. So your parents gave you cash? Yes. How did you get the cash from your parents? I had, they had direct deposit and then I cashed it out. Okay, so they put money in your bank? Yes. And then you took money out of your account to send the money cash. Can you prove that? I can go, I can try and find it to my bank statements. Okay, how would we do that? Uh, I have a bank at uh, Navy Federal. I okay. have the online banking. Oh, okay. Wow. Communication between you and the guy who sent money to? Yes, I have on the text, na text me. Sorry, text me? It's either text me or text now. I don't remember. It's There's two different apps. I do know that. Did you not think that that was suspicious? 
Right, anybody I needed that anybody phone can set up a text me or a text now and be anybody Please. that you could be anonymous on and set up whatever. Suspiciously, the contract clearly states it was signed yesterday, but she claims to have moved in two days prior. Continuously conflicting statements make it hard for us to accept, let alone the officers who deal with far craftier suspects every day. When did you start moving in? I started moving in about two days ago. So at least was signed yesterday. How'd you move in two days ago? Don't you think that's suspicious? Yeah. 4 11. Today's the 12th. And you moved in the day before you started to sign your lease? Go ahead and start moving again, and we'll sign the lease later. I was like, okay, sounds good. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, how can we get you to get this access to your uh, account? Got money out. I can find it through my transaction on the. Let's work on that real quick. I'm going to uncuff you. Don't go anywhere or do anything stupid, okay? Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's okay. All right. I need you to find it. Whose are these? Yes. Um, you free right now? Yeah. Get my piece of cone. She's gonna pull up here. Oh, uh, you just pull up. And... You, how many you order? How many pies? Dinner box. Man. A dinner box? Like, that's how many are that one, two? Hell no. When did you with uh withdraw the money? I'm looking, honestly. I can't find it. Remember how many days ago? I'm going through it every day trying to find it. I cannot find it. I'm already in March 7th. You can tell me your account doesn't show the, the withdrawal of how much money? It was supposed to be 4800 4800 but it doesn't show it at all? You can look too. What about the communication between you and the guy who sold you the house? It's on the text screen. Pick on here, but... This is part of the conversation, and then the other part is on my boyfriend's phone. This is communication between her and the guy who sent her the lease, right? Who sent her this? The person who sent her the lease. With no reliable evidence supporting their claims, the occupants were informed by the police that they would be arrested on suspicion of attempting to fraudulently occupy the property. This action not only violates the law, but can also lead to serious criminal consequences. Okay. So, with bank statement, she can't. This I, know, I was looking for your, I even got March 7, and I still couldn't find it. <clears throat> okay, here's the deal, kid. Right now, you have nothing to prove other than this, which doesn't prove anything for me, in that you're trying to fraudulently enter your, like, live here. Your homeboy over there is wanted for burglary, which probably falls in the line of something like this. You want to tell me what's really going on before this gets even more serious? So why don't you tell me the truth instead of, trying to come up with all the stuff because that if that was done yesterday it doesn't fall in line with what you're talking about what's really going on here? and so, what's your involvement i had just got evicted from my apartment that i had so i had to quickly try and find a spot or i was going to be homeless my boyfriend and his brother was helping me out they started texting like facebook market trying to find homes in there he hit us up about this house that house right there uh his name was like there was some Indian name, sorry, but D, I don't know how to pronounce it. The house was still available and that he just needed the first month's rent and then the last month's rent. He gave us the code and then said you were good to go. But again, I have you accessing yes. or access, trying to get codes four times, one at four in the morning, all the way up to, I think, nine in the morning yesterday. These are not adding up if he's providing you with a code. He provided me with one code. And then we had to leave to go grab our stuff. And okay. he said to go to the invitation hall. How, when did he provide you with this code? Is it on any message? It's on my boyfriend's message. It's on your boyfriend's message. Yes. Am I going to find this on his phone? Or is this going to be another be. rabbit hole that you're making me go down before we get to the church? No, it, it should be the same number as what's on okay. that phone. All right. Okay. Stand by. I've never been in trouble with the police. That's on some How long have you, you, you been dating your boyfriend? Since October. October. The girl is currently cooperative with the police, but it seems the couple hasn't agreed on their story yet. They may have been caught off guard by the quick arrival of law enforcement. Their testimonies contradict each other, especially regarding the payment method. Things become even more complicated when the couple's stories start to clash. The girlfriend claims she has proof of being scammed, while the boyfriend's account presents an entirely different version. Inconsistent testimonies like these can weaken their defense in court, leading to potentially serious consequences. What are they, like, trying to do? Huh? What are they trying to figure out? Yeah. They are true? I don't know. Would you mind writing down your story on a piece of paper? 
hand, hand sworn written statement stating you found out about the house, how you essentially pay for the house. Huh? We're, we're investigating. We're, we're just give us a second. No, no, yeah. Just go. Take the phone. Nothing violent. Okay. Put your name right here. This grid line. Then below that, write down what, what how, how this have transpired. Okay. Yo, her, babe, Jamie, Tolliver. It's done. Done. So what's going on, man? It's exactly what, what's going on. I pay money Monday with my girlfriend. Forty eight hundred. I moved in today. Guy came. No sign of lease. I got the lease right there that you guys got. Boom. Who, I, I, we were literally here. Who came and unlocked the door? Guy. We've been talking to him. Oh, really? Zillow on Marketplace. Okay. How did you pay this guy? In person. Very strange. You know why that? You know why it's strange? He has a problem with lying. So your girlfriend said that she mailed the money to the guy and has never met him. It's literally because you're lying. Came in person. We met him today. Came along, we moved in today. We were here only for five hours before y'all came. I just told you, Facebook Marketplace, Zillow. Zillow? Zillow, Facebook Marketplace. You know, those are two different companies, right? That's where Marketplace, it had it on Marketplace. The link sent to Zillow. So what this guy look like? How do you look over there? No, younger though. Who? Not a guy in the green shirt. The guy in the green, green shirt? shirt? He look, same color, same complexion, just like him, but a little skinny, younger. You're gonna stick by your story that a guy came and unlocked. He came today, yeah. He came today and unlocked the door. Yes, he called. Have you been in this house previous no. to when you came in today? So why is your girl's story completely different? What do you mean? Can you repeat she what she said? said you listen. guys handle this all through text now, okay. which allegedly is on your phone to get in. Yes. Okay. Yes. The man defiantly challenges the police with his web of lies, despite their attempts to point out inconsistencies in his statements. Perhaps he hopes the officers will slip up, but only those with unstable minds expose such gaps in their own narratives. As the tension rises, it becomes clear that his fabrications may lead him down a path he can't escape. He had to, I don't, I don't know She said you guys say. moved in yesterday. I'm sorry, she said you moved in three days, two days ago, yes. Two days ago, the lease was signed yesterday. ...to this place two, three days ago. Okay. It's not matching at all. It's not driving. She didn't say anything about meeting anybody here. She said that she paid him through the mail. That's, that's what it is. He came here today. She sent bread. She came here today. No, you said you paid him in person. You literally told me that. You know everything's on camera, right? You literally said you paid him in person when he unlocked the door. I said I paid him one day. I never mm -hmm. said it in person. No, you didn't. I did not say right here. You changed it. No, I did not you changed say that. It. I did not say that. Okay. How did you pay this guy? In person. Listen, I've been your story's full day. of shit. It's not adding up. The it's not adding right up. There. The lease is, are you kidding me? I can go online right now and print that out. That, they do that. They, I, I don't need I mean. to do that. I'm just saying that that's that means I nothing mean. to me. Exactly. That feels like, I don't know. Who's us? Me and my girlfriend. Okay. Where did it come from? From you had it. Wise. You had it the whole time. Working wise. Again, any more lies? She's a any more lies? She's a twenty-year-old woman. Or do you want to like? She's scared woman. of every one of y'all. Oh, that's it. Pointing yeah. guns at her. She's up. She's not even cuffed anymore. She's totally fine. When she told the story. Up, but I'm pretty sure she one hundred percent. I know that's my girlfriend. One hundred percent. She's scared. The only thing she has to do is tell us the truth, and she's saying that she's telling us the truth, which is not obviously true. She is telling the truth. Telling the truth to me. Okay, well, you both can't have two different stories and they both be the truth. It doesn't work. It's not how life works. So, nice try. Everything she says, she tells she tell the truth. I don't feel like I'm, I'm not lying either. Then that doesn't make any sense. I do understand, but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not lying either. She's telling the truth. Though. Okay. All right. Frustrated by the endless stream of lies from this guy, the police decide to reach out to the girlfriend once more, giving her a chance to come clean. We have the Elvis we got right here, Sarge. Turn off. Transfer on your back. All right, turn on. I'm gonna give you the last opportunity to come come clean. Your boyfriend, sex. Not one thing that you said, that you told us, matches. He came up with a completely different story on how you guys are. So, and he says that you're not lying, but he's not lying. And obviously, that doesn't work, right? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. How did you? So he said you don't have to pay until the 16th. 
because I don't get paid to the 16th. So you haven't paid any? No, not yet. And he said that we don't have to pay until the 16th. Okay. Because he was trying to work with me. Okay. Why did you come up with this whole other story then? Because I don't want to get in trouble. If you weren't gonna, didn't want to get in trouble, why wouldn't you just tell me the truth? Why wouldn't you come up with a story? Lying to me is going to get you in trouble. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. So this guy allegedly texted you a code to get in initially and then said go through the homes? Yes, it was through Zillow. He contacted me. Like I put the application through Zillow, requested to apply. I was like, when would you like to apply? And then he texted me through the phone number. It's suspicious to me because that doesn't work like that. You can't just put homes in Zillow and then put like fake numbers. Like it, I know this because I'm also a realtor. You can't mm -hmm. just do this. It, it's impossible. I'm having a hard time believing that you received the number from somebody from Zillow. I just said, I, like, thank you for inquiring about this address. Uh, it is still available. And I saw the address. I was like, oh, okay, that's the place I, okay. I applied to. So I texted him back. All right. Can you prove any of this? That it's what you're all, telling me is true? It's all on the phone. That's the only thing that's... Because I was trying to so find... So what did you things. show us? What was that? That was me trying to get a hold of him. But that looks like Facebook. That was through the text now. That was text now? Mm-hmm. All right. You're being placed under arrest. Okay? I don't believe anything you're saying. You've already lied once. Now you're lying again. Okay? And you're not even out any money on it. Nobody just lets people stay without paying, especially renting. Guaranteed, you pay first month's last month's rent. So I don't believe a word you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think that you try to get in here fraudulently, and I don't think it's your first rodeo, and it is what it is. Actions have consequences. So step this way. Do you have anything on you that's going to poke us or stick us? I just have a bait in my pocket. Okay, deal with that. Your friend who owns the car is that you found? Yes. After determining that the lease was fraudulent, the young woman faced serious charges burglary of an unoccupied dwelling and scheme to defraud. Meanwhile, her accomplice was arrested for violating probation and also charged with the same offenses. This case serves as a stark reminder that engaging in deceptive practices not only leads to legal consequences but also jeopardizes one's future. It's crucial to understand the importance of honesty and integrity, as the repercussions of illegal actions can be far-reaching. And you're saying you've cashed checks? From, from I never cashed this check before. Okay. It's just odd to me that everything was just here and now it's gone. On May 3rd, 2023, a woman brazenly walked into a bank, attempting to cash a counterfeit check, despite already being flagged earlier that day for trying the same scheme at a different branch. But this time, her luck was about to run out. The sharp-eyed bank staff wasted no time and alerted the police, setting the stage for an intense confrontation. Little did she know, her risky plot was about to unravel in front of everyone. What officers uncovered next left the entire bank in shock, revealing a web of deception far deeper than anyone expected. Stay tuned to discover how this dramatic takedown unfolded. What's going on with the check you're trying to cash here? They don't think it's real. It's a gig that I worked that they gave me. Okay, so somebody gave you the check then? Yeah. Okay. I worked, so. They don't think it is, yeah. So we just want to make sure you don't knowingly no, you're trying to cash a fraudulent check. No. Okay. You got your ID on you? Yeah. Do they get it? Okay. I'll get it in a second. Who's the check from? What is? What do you do for Gig Smart? What is that? Um, there's different jobs that I can take to. Like what kind of jobs? It's literally different. Like ones. anything and everything? Mm -hmm. What do you like? Last See what's available? Mm -hmm. or? And this isn't the only one that I... There's different apps that I use to work different gigs. I worked there for three weeks. The suspect insisted that the check was simply payment for her work, claiming she had no idea of the storm it would bring. If it's something that you may not have knew it was a fraudulent, then we can figure it out. No, so we just got to investigate contact it. contact them because I need to get paid for what I work for. Mm -hmm. That's not right. And what's the name of that site you said? Gigsmart. Like G-I-G-S-M-A-R-T? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is it an app? Mm -hmm. Did you get a phone number or something, or how did you communicate with who you're supposed to work for? Um, they just send me um, our information. They send me the address and what time I'm supposed to be there. And you said you received this in the mail, mm -hmm. and you're saying you've cashed checks from from, from this monster no, truck? I never cashed a, this check before. It's okay. Chris Porto. Yeah, that, that's your signature, and then that's their signature. Is that right? This is my signature, and she just. How many gigs have you done through this 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
except for the person on it is real. Mm. The check is completely false. They don't even make cashier's checks that look like this. Mm. The only person and thing that is real on here is it's got your name right. and then it's got the remitter. And again, just to be completely transparent, well, they are already trying to close that account due to fraud. Here's my concern is you can't show me any proof of you actually haven't been working over there. And I've got you trying to cash the fake track. Which in and of itself, regardless of on its own. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt to I'm show me to, some kind know, of info. Like, I'm not trying to get in trouble for something and then I need to get paid for what I work. You have a contact info for anybody you're supposed to contact in regards? I just came from the pool. Oh. What? And it's just odd to me that everything was just here and now it's gone. Well, there's two things. I, I keep clicking on it. There's, there's two things I'm going to tell you. One, something you got to understand. You want to stand between the cars with the block again? Okay. People lie to us all the time, so, so you could be telling the truth. You get lied to all the time. Uh, Even as the evidence piles up, she maintains an unsettling confidence, showing little concern for the truth. The police have already exposed her fraudulent scheme, yet she offers no sign of backing down. The real question is, how long can she keep up this act before reality finally catches up to her? All the texts I got before. Never had no issues. Oh. Because here's the thing, when you get more information or whatever, mm -hmm. then you can go after this whomever else. Mm -hmm. Setting this whole, orchestrating this whole thing to cause you to get in trouble. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm looking for the gig that I've worked and it's not here. The address, everything. I'm trying to contact the court. What am I supposed to um, tell them? Is it okay if he just keeps my ID? Because I was headed to the hospital. What are you going to the hospital for? I haven't eaten since Friday. I'm highly dehydrated into my drink. I don't know. You was headed to the hospital when? Right after I left here. All right, Mr. Wright, you got your hand packed back, okay? Okay, you are going to be going for um, the possession of the check. Let's get more drinks out of here, too. I have to lock my um, car. Yeah, yeah, we'll get your car locked. Yeah, he, he talked to me. What does he want? Um, trying to find a ride to uh, uh, Winder. And I had my car changed the dryer clothes. I'm going to let you change. I'm freezing. Uh, least, well, we're going to go out to the jail. They'll get you changed out. Do you have anything on your person other than your phone? Where's your keys at? Despite her insistence on innocence and urgent financial needs, the woman was ultimately arrested and charged with fraud. In legal terms, attempting to cash a fraudulent check is a serious offense that carries severe consequences, including hefty fines, restitution, and potential imprisonment. Engaging in deceptive practices like this not only risks one's freedom but also erodes trust in our financial systems. It's crucial to ensure that all financial transactions are legitimate and to handle documents with care. For anyone facing similar circumstances, seeking honest advice and legal guidance is essential before getting involved in questionable financial activities. Remember, integrity is always the best policy. This case serves as a crucial lesson that no one is above accountability, and understanding our rights does not grant us the freedom to act without consequence. It's vital to approach all situations with respect for the law and consideration for others. If you found value in this discussion, please like, share, and subscribe to support our mission of spreading awareness and education. Thank you for tuning in, and may you have a fantastic day ahead.